The face of it is a million dollars, meaning your collateral, I'll give you 800,000. Some people would say, I'll give you 500,000. Others will say, I really like it. I want you to make it a little bit bigger. I'll give you 1.2 million. How does the money come together for one of your projects? Um, you know, it, it, in a couple different ways. Um, uh, normally, uh, someone, you know, will will send the script out, and then and it just we have a, a network of, of sales agents and distributors, and as long as we have an actor on the film that they like, and that they can sell, they'll give us a, uh, a minimum guarantee, and and then we have places that we can go take that minimum guarantee and and cash flow it. Depending on who that comes from, we can get between 80 and 120% of the face of the minimum guarantee. Think about filming in Mexico. What happens normally, I'll back up just a little bit, is that you'll normally that MG amount will not be enough. That's why people go to the rebate states because then they can go get you know about another 30% or so, which will complete their budget. Maybe they have a little bit of cash or an investor, an equity investor. Generally speaking, we can keep our budgets low enough to, to, to work just with what we have with the minimum guarantee, which is why we're kind of unique in that way. What they give us with the minimum guarantee, we make the movie with that, whether it's the you know, 80 or 120%. Sometimes there's a little bit of money in there, with you know, gap money. But um, generally, that's the way it works. And sometimes you just have people that just have money and they come down and want to make a movie and then but but we like to that's the rich uncle um, program isn't really one to build your career on in my opinion you want to you want to have the right connections and the know-how to speak the language of those distributors and financiers you know we have this person this package we have these people we're going to film it here here's the budget here's the schedule and then we've done it a million times um, and then they say, okay, cool. They give you the paper. And once the paper is collateralized, there's a lot of people that will, will, um, will, you know, give you money for it. It's like, if you go to, we're, we're selling, uh, you know, paper cups and we get a, um, a, a order from Walmart for a hundred thousand paper cups, someone will give you the money to make those cups. You know, the key is, is you have to make sure that it's at the right price and you know how to make the cups and things like that. But once you once you get the, the purchase order from Walmart, any, a lot of people give you the money to make, make it, as long as you know how to make it. So it's kind of like that. You said previously uh, we all need to know about the sort of the law of supply and demand. Yes. So is there like a crash course you could, you could teach in well, a couple minutes? Um, yeah, we're, that's I tell I tell that to a lot of people, actors especially, because um, actors uh, sometimes will say, "Hey, I'm worth this much money, and I want this much money." I'll say, "Well, I love to pay that money, but we're all uh, subject to the laws of supply and demand. And if 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 I go to Germany, Japan, and um, Italy, and I say I have uh, Joe Blow in my movie, I'll Whatever they tell me, I'll give you half of it. Chances are they're gonna tell me, I'm not gonna give you any more money for him or her. And so, so I have to sell the film. So I understand that your services are your services, but I can't pay you premiums that I can't recoup. This is the laws of supply and demand. <clears throat> and oops, and you know we'd love to make our art and our wonderful films that we have in our minds, that we have thought about and dreamed about making, but at the end of the day, we have to um, supply what is in demand. And, and that's the difference, in my opinion, of working a lot and working a little. And it will be, you know, maybe in the end of it, it'll be that, wow, you should have just made two great films and not 20 cool films. Maybe that's what, maybe that would, be if there was an alternate universe, but the, the path that we've taken is one that looks at what is in demand and helps to figure out a way to supply that demand so that, so that, the, so that the train keeps moving down the tracks. The, the enemy 
of the process is, is to not be moving. You have to keep moving, uh, even if it's risky, even if every project, and let me tell you, every project is not a good project. Of the 28, 29 projects we've done, everyone has not gone great. There's been, and, and there's no one else to blame but us or me. And, some, and those can be hard to come back from sometimes. But, you know, you don't do 28 films and have them all be perfect. It's just not going to happen. The key is keep moving. You keep adding value. You keep um, making sure that um, the, uh, what you provide, um, you know, in the end um, gets finished and is, is put out into the market. It's success level you really can't help or, or say too much about. It has a lot of different factors, but make sure that the quality stays very consistent and um, and you'll keep people will keep coming back to you to to uh, figure it out figure out a way to get their films done so so you know we we follow the demand and follow that up with trying to figure out a way to keep the supply as close to what we want as possible but we're still falling under the same under the same laws of supply and demand what is the market for your movies and how do they end up making money well, um, we, you know, the, low, the, the kind of medium to low budget action movies, um, the market it used to be um, kind of with the AFM market, the American film market market, it used to be straight to video, uh, streaming. Uh, now it's mostly streaming. Um, when we create the films, we, we don't make these films right now to be projected. Um, one of the reasons is because some of the best films now are not projected, um, they're streamed. and. Um, so most of it's streaming. Uh, it's coming off of the old school video model, um, you know, which is a point of sale model, you know, perusing Blockbuster and that looks interesting. Let me grab it, you know. Now uh, you're on streaming platforms, and so you look for, um, you know, Amazon, Netflix. We have Netflix films. We have Amazon films, Hulu, um, Tubi. Our films are everywhere, um, and. And so, um, uh, it still comes from the old system, though, that, which is the Van Damme, Seagal's world of action films, which is, it's formulaic a little bit. The thing is that we do, with my films specifically, is I add this artistic tinge to them. Um, if you look at the reels and stuff, you'll see it. Um, I try to do beautiful... I mean, beautiful framing, center framing, things that are um, to make the to make it look a little bit bigger, a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more composed, um, and not just you know shoot them up action and knock them down action. Uh, so I do a lot of beautiful composition, and then I get a, a lot of really really good performances out of the uh, actors. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know they kind of go into the same streaming platforms: Amazon, Netflix. Uh, Hulu, things like that. And that's okay. I think that's where things are at now. So I don't think much is getting projected these days. I mean, a lot sometimes, but I don't see films under 50, 60 million dollars getting projected that much. And if so, it's an, anom it's an anomaly. And your distributor is approaching these outlets, Tubi, Hulu, things like mm -hmm. that? Not, not you personally? No, no. The distributor does that. Um, when the, we hand it off to the distributor, they, they send it out among the world, but usually they have, because uh, like I said before about collateralization, usually it's collateralized in one way or the other. They already have these people interested um, and, and they're waiting for it a lot of times. And, um, and so, you know, as long as the film screens good, has a good trailer and is, is filmed as is written or close to it, then it goes out on the platforms and you know, th these platforms are subscription based. So it's not, I mean, they're gonna get that subscription whether they like my movie or not. They're still gonna get the $10 a month. So they need content. And, um, and so the content um, and choice, that's what people want. You can't have, look at the page and look at the Netflix page and there's four movies on there. They want choice. All the films aren't gonna have the same quality, but you know, they're, they have good relationships, the distributors and sale agents have good relationships with these platforms and they get it out there and it's always nice to see them on there. Yeah. Can you explain what you mean by collateralized? Well, collateralized meaning um, 
the uh, money has to come through collateralization process, which will be um, that the distributor, sales agent, will have to have sold or at least have interested, let's call it Netflix or Amazon, in that movie to, let's say, a million dollars or whatever, or 500,000, and then the other 500,000 they can sell in foreign sales. You have to have a piece of paper that they can take to a financial institution that says, I'm gonna sell 500,000 to this one, and I've already talked to them, and they see this and see that. They've seen, they know the director, they know Frazier's directing, they know what the subject matter is, they know that this actor is gonna be in it. If it has those elements, it has a beginning, middle, and end, we'll buy it at this amount. So they can take all that, the aggregate of all that money, that number, and that creates the collateral. And so then you take that package, collateral package, to a financier. And the financiers will look at it and say, I'll say, okay, the face of it is a million dollars, meaning your collateral, I'll give you 800,000. Some people would say, I'll give you 500,000. Others will say, I really like it. I want you to make it a little bit bigger. I'll give you 1.2 million. So it depends on who you go to. But everything has to be collateralized by something if you're gonna do it in the traditional finance. Like I said, if you have the rich uncle, then they'll just take their chance or whatever if you can do it, you know, crowdfunding or something like that. But every, but if you, but the, the more stable environment to build a career on is to be able to collateralize your projects and your packages so that you can take them out and get them financed. Then you can figure out, okay, I can, if I have this element, that element, that element, that element, this product is collateralized. And now I can just take it out to several funding sources and figure out who wants to do it. And with these funding sources, where is a filmmaker looking for how to get in contact with these individuals? I mean, it sounds like a lot of these people, they work with existing, it, it's not like they just have a website where people can just contact them? Well, what, um, my experience has been that, that your distributor knows who will quote bank their paper. So when they say, okay, I'm gonna, I, your film's worth this much, they already have a, a, a financier that knows them. They've already paid back several times. And so they already kind of have an open deal. They say, okay, so if um, they come there with a Fraser film that's a million dollars worth of sales or potential sales or whatever, I'll give 80% of that. They already know where to go with that. But there's also in kind of a network of indie producers that we all kind of use the same people. A lot of money comes out of the UK. Um, you can just look it up and find people, but you're always best, whoever's giving you collateral should know who's going to fund their collateral. That's how you know their collateral is valuable. If somebody says, if I go to you and say, hey, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a piece of paper to say uh, your film's worth a million dollars, people are gonna say, who is this guy? Where, what has he sold? What other collateral does he have? Is he cross collateralizing this with other films? Blah, blah, blah. So, so most, so if you, a question for filmmakers to ask uh, producers is to ask if you go to somebody and somebody gives you a minimum guarantee and you sign your film to do it with them, they give you a minimum guarantee at a, you know, whatever the amount is. First thing you ask them is, who's, who do you know will bank your paper? Because if your paper, your paper has to be bankable, so you can get it from somebody that no one will bank the paper, and then you've tied up your movie for a year. So you ask them up front, who banks your paper? They'll say, well, you can go to Citibank, you can go to this funding guy, you can go to this private equity fund, and they fund that, and they funded our last four films, so we can go to, you know, you send it out, and people send you a term sheet, and they, you know, they, they bid for it. The funding companies bid for your, to fund the film. So first and foremost, you were a consumer of action films before you started making them. So you knew the audience, is that right? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I like I said before, I kind of got turned into an action director because that's where we are and that's what the, the, the people, distributors wanted. I tend to, to have more, um, my personal films that I like tend to be more um, epic and deep. Uh, my favorite films are like Apocalypse Now, 
um, which has a lot of action, but it's also incredibly story driven. Um, you know, Godfather, um, um, movies like um, you know anything with Dave, by David Fincher, they have great action in them, but they're more story driven. And you know, I think that where I'd like to end up would be there. Um, you know, action films are great, but you know, you know, in the big action films, there's a whole separate unit doing that. You know, that, that's doing all that big stunts and stuff. They're, and sometimes they do it completely independently. And um, the director, you know, worries about the story and make sure the story ties into everything. Um, so I'd like to do a film with no action, frankly. That'd be that would be my, because I've done so many with the action and then cartels and shooting everybody up. I'd like to do one that just had um, just a story, just a, a compelling, interesting story that, um, you know, something like a sling blade, you know, where it's just a good story and something that means something and maybe inspires and, and people can learn something from it and feel good about it and be part of um, uh, their artistic experience. So, but, but then I can't, I don't want to down action movies. I mean, they've done a lot for me and I've built a career on it so far. And um, I like doing those too, you know. I would just, would, it's, a, it's a balance. And so I do, but, but in, those, in the films we do, there's, we sneak that story in, we sneak it in so that it's there, so that, so that that's what keeps that train moving and that, that trajectory towards um, more of exactly what I want. I don't wanna just you know, capitulate to doing action all the time. I wanna, wanna create that story in there and the, and the framing and the cinematography and all that stuff so that it, it's a little bit more than just the average action film, I hope.